Hi, uh, my name is Senator Eric Pratt, and uh, I'm from Sen I represent Senate District 55, which is Scott County, uh, the communities of Prior Lake, Shakopee, and Jordan. And I want to thank you all for being here today. For a number of years, we've been hearing growing concerns about special education uh, in our public schools. Uh, last session we had uh, in, the, in the education section of the omnibus bill uh, a uh, provision that called for the creation of a legislative working group to take a comprehensive look at special education and its impacts on all stakeholders, uh, students, families, teachers, uh, and school districts. And even though that uh, the omnibus bill was uh, vetoed, uh, the, the Senate Education Policy Committee continued to meet through the summer and fall uh, to continue that discussion with the hopes of finding consensus reforms. Now, while usually the topic of special education turns to funding, like most topics here at the, at the Capitol, we really took a student-centric focus on the topic. We wanted to make sure that we were focusing on the, on the experiences of all the stakeholders. Now, one of the things we heard in the hearings is that over 50% of a teacher's time can be taken up with paperwork and mandated procedures. And it was cited as one of the key factors to teacher burnout. Unfortunately, we've, we, we've created a, a, a process and all of the policies with special education that were implemented were done with the best of intentions. But the process has become so complex that we're taking away valuable time, teacher time from that student. Now, early in the process, we challenged educators uh, to find changes that would uh, uh, help the process be better for all stakeholders without cutting services to students. We knew that the best solutions were going to be coming from the people who are directly involved with providing those services, not from St. Paul. I want to thank the Minnesota School Boards Association for really taking up that challenge and working with their members statewide. And I want to thank New Ulm, who was the first community to answer that challenge and really kind of to break the ice because we still have ideas coming in. I said if we got actionable solutions that we would create bills based on them. And this week we're going to start dropping bills to do exactly that. Now, this wasn't meant to be a, a, a partisan effort either. And so my goal uh, as, the, as the former chairman of this committee was to make sure that uh, every committee member that participated in those hearings uh, was the chief author of a bill regardless of party. And, and I want to thank uh, all of my colleagues uh, for their efforts. And with that, I'd like to introduce Senator Greg Clausen. Well, good morning, and thank you, Senator Pratt. I really appreciate your leadership on this issue. I'd like to begin by just telling you a little bit about myself. Greg Clausen, I serve the communities of Apple Valley, Rosemont, Northeast, Lakeville, and Coates. But my background before coming to the Capitol for 44 years, I was an educational administrator serving large suburban schools. 33 of those years, I was an assistant principal, high school principal, and then district office administrator. And through those times, I hired dozens of special education teachers. I sat in on hundreds of IEP meetings with parents and faculty and staff. And over those years, I heard from teachers, as we heard in the sessions that we had uh, this summer and into the fall, about paperwork. And I like to share two stories about that. <clears throat> I'll never forget uh, a young teacher. She had been in our building for six years, special education teacher, teacher. At the end of the year, she came into my office and she said, I'm afraid I won't be returning in the fall. And she started to cry. And the reason was, she said, I am spending as much time on paperwork as I spend in the classroom with direct service to students. And she said, most of that time is at home. And I've come to the conclusion that I can no longer continue to do that and be fair to myself and my students. Now, this was a person that I had seen a lot of potential. And she was an excellent teacher. And I would have assumed that over the years, she would have been a department head at one point. The second story I'd like to share is about a veteran teacher. Veteran teacher at the end of the year, again, came to my office. Now, she was not eligible for retirement. 
but she said, I won't be returning in the fall. And the reason was, I have to be fair to my mental and physical health. And the demands of my job, paperwork being one of them, was something that drove her out of education. I think our work this past fall and summer in trying to identify and address some of these issues and the initiatives that we will be providing in the form of bills, I hope, will provide different stories than the two I just shared with you in the future. And again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here this morning. Good morning, my name is Denise Dietrich and I am here on behalf of the Minnesota School Boards Association. The bills that the senators are introducing within the next week are related to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act or as we call it, IDEA, which was enacted 44 years ago. The purpose of which was to ensure that children's with children with disabilities be granted a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. Something that all of us standing up here today wholeheartedly support. And let me just repeat that one more time because this is really important. Everybody standing up here supports IDEA and the and the services that special education students re, uh, receive. In 2004, Congress reauthorized the law with one of the priorities to reduce paperwork and other administrative burdens on special education teachers. The intent was to free up staff to work with students instead of pushing paper and attending an overabundance of meetings. However, the current system our special education teachers follow currently is not an easy one. It is repetitive, it is costly, it is burdensome, it is complex, and it is exhausting. This has been demonstrated in the 2013 evaluation report on special education prepared by the Minnesota State Auditor. This, it states that of the 45 Minnesota statutes studied, that specifically govern special education, 19 of those at, have at least one provision that exceeds federal requirements. The New Ulm uh, Special Education Services Coordinator in her public testimony, Irina Sobeliva, called the paperwork, and I quote, an unbearable burden, quote, end of quote where more often than not, special education teachers spend lunch breaks, prep time, and much of their personal time working on required paperwork. She went on to say, and I quote, the focus has shifted from meeting the needs of students that we serve to meeting the needs of paperwork requirements. In an effort to look at ways to maintain a high quality special education process and due process for our special education students and a way to look at uh, reducing costs or mandates, MSBA asked school board members for specific ideas. New Ulm stepped forward and responded with six recommendations that were vetted and quantified by their special education team those who are in the trenches working with special education students every day. MSBA then took their proposal and asked district superintendents if they agreed with those six recommendations. Over, over 90 superintendents respond, 96% of them agreed with all six of the recommendations. So with that, the Minnesota School Boards Association wholeheartedly supports these six recommendations. And now I will pa uh, uh, pass this on to Senator Dames. Thank you. Well, thank you, Denise. And uh, I'm Senator Gary Dames, representing Senate District 16. Senate District 16 includes Brown County, Redwood County, Yellow Medicine, Lacoparo, Lyon, and part of Renville. So it's a nice district out in southwest Minnesota. And I'm very fortunate to have the uh, New Orleans Public School System in my district. It's uh, been a very good relationship working with the school district, and I am so proud of those folks all the time and effort they put in to come up with these uh, new initiatives and some of the reforms that we're looking at. And they really stepped above and beyond to do this. It took a lot of time, 
under the leadership of Superintendent Bertrang and his team. It took a lot of time to put these together. Very well thought out initiatives and reforms and very well balanced and have been very well uh, received in the education community. So we're really looking forward to continue to carry those bills through to fruition and see this initiated and see these things help. It's gonna certainly allow our teachers in the special education area more time to stand with their students and I think it's gonna build a stronger relationship between our students and our teachers. So with that said, I would like to introduce uh, Superintendent Bertrand, give a little background about Jeff. Uh, he has over 28 years of experience in the education field. He, he was a shop teacher, a high school principal, elementary principal, and now is a superintendent. He is also a retired brigadier general for the Minnesota Army National Guard with over 29 years of service. And he's been the superintendent in the New Orleans Public School System since 2013. In 2017, he was named the 2017 Administrative Excellence by the Minnesota Association of School Administrators. I commend him for all his hard work and his team for working so well to get this accomplished. We truly do appreciate it. And with that, uh, Senator Bertrand. I'm sorry. Superintendent. I'll take that. Uh, thank you, Senator Dames. I appreciate that. And Senator Pratt and the committee, thank you for inviting me today to be part of this uh, conversation. I also like to put a shout out to the New Alm special ed staff and the, the work they put in to find this data and get some actionable recommendations that we can move forward with. As has been said before, the whole goal is to make more impact with students positively as we look at test scores, data, student achievement, what's going to be the best thing for them. So our staff took a look at it and said, the biggest things we have for a problem is we have too much paperwork that's not making impact with students. We also have teachers doing too much typing behind the computer and not time with the kids. We have paraprofessionals who do a great job, but they're not the qualified, licensed people who should be making the decisions for education. Uh, so that in mind, we said, okay, give us a recommendation. So they came back with the six recommendations that are part of the bills and appreciate the bills coming forward. If we can do these things and, and minimize the paperwork, the teachers spend more time with their kids. The kids have a benefit. We'll have parents also understanding more about what the IEP is gonna say so that it has something that means something to the student and the family. We did the data analysis between 30 to 60 hours per year is spent on a student with the unnecessary paperwork. So if you take that times 15 on an average caseload, you're looking at well over 500 to 900 hours a year that can be used in teaching and learning and working with the kids to get the skills they need to be successful. So our recommendation isn't to take away anything from the students, nothing that's gonna harm them as far as their goals and their objectives, but to make an impact immediately by reducing this burden of paperwork. So take what Minnesota's doing now, reduce it to the federal level for paperwork, streamline uh, what we do in Minnesota for education for special ed students to make that positive impact. That's all we're trying to achieve here, and I do appreciate, again, the work the senators have been doing, uh, MSBA, uh, all the di different uh, superintendents. It's about kids and how we make that impact. So with that, I will introduce Nicole Sutton. Uh, good morning, and thank you for this opportunity to be able to uh, um, speak about this important um, issue. Um, my name is Nicole Sutton. I am a, a parent of three boys in the Robbinsdale Area Schools. When my oldest son um, was 10 months old, um, we found out that he had a disability, which then led us down the road of um, the world of special education at the early childhood level, um, and then transitioning into the elementary um, years. Um, throughout those years, um, numerous IEP meetings um, that I as a team member, as a parent member sat at, and would sit there and go, oh my goodness, what is in this paperwork? What does this all mean? My husband and I would take it back, sit at the kitchen table, and, and glean through the information, make sure that the information that was in that paperwork reflected what my son needed at those different levels throughout as he matriculated um, through school. Um, one of the ongoing conversations that we always had with um, the team members, the teachers, the, um, the other professionals that were at the table was the amount of paperwork. Um, that they had to prepare in order to sit at that, that team meeting. Um, and then for me as a parent was like, um, yes, and how do I understand all of this? So um, as my son 
got into high school and started transitioning and thinking about what am I going to do after high school, um, he started doing more self-advocating. And so he needed to be able to understand what all the paperwork meant too, which was another layer as well. So mm -hmm. for me as a parent, any time that you can increase the time that is spent with teacher teachers um, throughout early childhood all the way up through um, high school is important. Um, my son saw that and I think that is important for all of our students. Any time that we can help our teachers in, in, in improving that, that chance to increase their time with our students is important too. I thank you. I thank you for all the work you're doing. I appreciate all the work that the special education team in New Ulm um, put towards this as well. And I, I'm looking forward to um, the senators um, moving forward with this on behalf of uh, all of the students um, across the state of Minnesota. Thank you. I am Senator Paul Anderson from Senate District 44, representing Plymouth, Minnetonka, and Woodland, and also school districts of Wyzetta, Hopkins, Osseo, Robbinsdale, and Minnetonka. And I can't say much more than that has already been said today, but I can tell you in all my discussions with all my educators, with my school districts, not one conversation comes up without addressing the burdens and uh, costs involved in special education. We're talking about the policy uh, end of things today. We can push and push with regards to the federal government fulfilling their 40% of IDEA. That's a great conversation to have, but today on policy, teachers, as we all know here, and uh, the great bipartisan support here in organizations and, our coll and my colleagues, uh, we can talk about uh, teachers that go into the profession. They don't necessarily go in for the love of money, right? They go in for the love of teaching. They go in for the love and care of, of their students. And the burdensome paper paperwork and uh, unfunded mandates that are placed on top of, of all their work just prevents them from doing that. So we want to continue to do this in the bills that are going to uh, you'll be faced with here uh, and, and, and hear from us in the next couple of weeks are going to really address that. So thank you. I'm John Hoffman. I'm uh, from Champlin, Senate District 36. Full disclosure, I did compliance on, on Public Law 99-457, which is the birth to three idea, and I know I'm going to get a joke on that one because that's you've got to throw that out. But, but the one thing that, that uh, Senator Pratt, when, when he brought the, the conversation about, look, we want solutions, we want ideas, bring your ideas to this committee, and, and it's, uh, it's sad to see the, the uh, policy committee get, get pulled into one other big committee, but at the same time, the work that we had done the, the last year and a half, uh, it'll be nice to see it going forward. And one of the things that we always brought up was due process rights. I mean, you call, and, and prior to 1975, there was parents who brought states' lawsuits that said our kids were not having access to free, appropriate public education. The Supreme Court decision in 1975 made that a reality, and that we're still having those same conversations. The work that Senator Pratt's committee has done is to keep that conversation going, only now let's really look at student achievement. Let's look at what our desired results are and the end result to make sure that not only does the full utilization of of the free appropriate public education come into play, but that every child has a right to succeed in the state of Minnesota. And so we're looking forward to these discussions this year. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, you know, we all have similar experiences. I, uh, uh, I sat on the uh, Minnesota River Valley Special Ed Co-op uh, for many years and, and heard similar stories as to what uh, Senator Clausen said. And that's why uh, I'm so excited. These bills are gonna make a real impact. Students will get more personal time with their teachers. Teachers will get more time doing what they love. And the school districts will get some relief from the costly administrative requirements. And I do wanna thank uh, MSBA, uh, New Ulm School District, and uh, all the senators that participated uh, throughout the summer and fall. I mean, we had great, uh, great participation out of the committee. I'm proud of the work that we've done. Uh, if you want, we've got a, a summary of the bills uh, sitting on the table for you so we don't go through them all in, in uh, great detail, but uh, any of us would be happy to answer any questions you have. Can I 
the big picture, and Senator Klaus, and you can join him too. The big picture here, we've had multiple bipartisan press conferences, and we're, we're trying to deal with that and figure out <laughs> what, what is the deal. You Senators weren't even on the ballot, and bipartisanship seems to be breaking out. Can you talk about that big picture? <laughs> oh, that'll look good in the newspaper. You know, you know I'll... Education uh, shouldn't be partisan. Thank you. Uh, we're working for the children and uh, families of Minnesota, and uh, we find common ground and work together on issues that we believe we need to change uh, the direction of Minnesota. So um, education is one of those things that I, I think we can agree upon. And, you know, Senator Clausen and I talked, uh, you know, I think what you're, what you're seeing is really a unique opportunity in Minnesota where we can start to change the culture of the Minnesota Senate and the Minnesota legislature. Our, our, our people expect us to work together, and this is one where uh, every senator uh, has a stake in this. And, uh, and we all had a, when, when you can find common ground on an issue, uh, you can find, you can oftentimes find common solutions. Do you have house authors? Uh, we're gonna be working with house authors. I'm gonna be talking to uh, Representative Joachim uh, uh, regarding the bills. Uh, all this kind of came together very, very quickly, and so uh, uh, we're just getting the bill jackets this week, uh, which is why uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to her yet. With regard to the paperwork that you mentioned, can you talk a little bit more specifically about the nature of all that paperwork and how these bills would alleviate that? You and Superintendent, that's... There's a, there are many requirements with paperwork at the federal level versus the state level. Uh, the bigger ones deal around a functional behavior assessment, which is a behavior plan for a student IEP. Based on state law, we have to hold an IEP meeting to change that if it doesn't work. That requires more people, more time, different deadlines than just saying, hey, this doesn't make sense. Two of us put our head together, let's change it. But we can't do that without having the whole IEP team meeting and inviting the parents in again to talk about what the changes are going to be. Uh, we also have something called transitional services where the teachers of eighth graders right now are required to do a transition plan for when they become ninth graders. That's the federal law says age 16. We're just saying make this federal level instead of the state level. It's too much of a requirement. A lot of schools are organized in different ways. In our school as an example, we have a middle school 5-8. So eighth grade special ed teachers are putting a plan together for a ninth grader and they aren't with the ninth grade team. So we're looking at different things to eliminate the requirements that take over the time instead of teaching. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank okay. you. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all for coming. And, uh, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us if you, if you do think of anything later on. We appreciate your time.